Hello, this is Jim Merritt of Quick Trainer Incorporated in beautiful Wilmington, North Carolina. This short video today, we're going to discuss the chart of accounts. Every accounting program has a chart of accounts. QuickBooks, whether it's QuickBooks Desktop or QuickBooks Online is no different. The method in which you create the chart of accounts and tweak the chart of accounts is almost the same between the QuickBooks Desktop version and the QuickBooks Online, but there are some subtleties. But I'm going to make the assumption with this video that you're new to the whole concept of charter accounts and how to set one up properly. So I want to start by just showing you how you can see what a proper chart of accounts might look like. So we're on the Quick Trainer website, and I've already did a search here for chart of accounts and these are the results that came up for the chart of accounts and if I click here I'll get an option to download a PDF file and if I once I've downloaded that I can open it so this is what a a good chart of accounts will look like and feel free to use this to copy this um, You'll find that most accountants and CPAs, they'll love this uh, layout. If they want it to look a little differently, they'll tell you so. But they would appreciate this. Okay, so there's your chart of accounts. Let me switch back now to QuickBooks Online. How do you get to your chart of accounts? Click up here by the gear. This is known as the gear or anywhere along this line where your company file name um, is expressed. And then come over here and click Chart of Accounts. So with the Chart of Accounts up on the screen, and you can say you can see I'm not giving away any secret information about bank accounts. This is just a test file. Um, a training file that I use and I'm always adding stuff in in order to create these videos. So here is one bank account you can see. Here is a second bank account for those of you who have a separate payroll account for instance. You could certainly have three, four, five, ten, twenty, how many ever bank accounts you would like to have. And then as we go down the list here's your accounts receivable. Um, a loan to officer, an employee cash advance. This is an important account and although we won't talk about how this is used in this video, just know that it's a critical account. If you have inventory in your business, there's your inventory asset account. If you have given money, say, to um, a utility company, whether it's your water or your gas or your electric, and they are holding that security deposit, this is the account you would use for that. And then notice here we have fixed asset accounts. If you're renting your or leasing your space and you make improvements to that space, that's what leasehold improvements is for. Furniture and fixtures you may buy, equipment you may buy, computer hardware, computer software, office equipment like copiers, autos and trucks. And note about auto and trucks, they need to be in the business's name. And then depreciation of these assets. You, it would be uncommon for most users to record anything to this account. This is typically where your CPA would record the depreciation um, of these assets up here. Then we have accounts payable. All right. So just real quick, the difference between accounts payable and accounts receivable. Accounts receivable, your customers, your clients, your patients those people who owe you money, okay? Counts payable, those vendors who you owe money to, okay? Then we have credit card, and you can have multiple credit card type accounts. We have sales tax payable. We have payroll liabilities, employee social security, company social security, Medicare, Medicare for the company, Medicare for the employee, federal income, federal, federal unemployment tax, your state withholding tax, if you live in a state where there's withholding, um, your state unemployment tax, um, advanced earned income, um, employee 401ks, etc., uh, the employee portion, the company portion. 
direct deposit liabilities if you're using direct deposit. Uh, down here we get into long-term liabilities. Those are liabilities that are going to be more than a year, where the other current liabilities are going to be shorter than a year. Um, so loan from shareholder if you're an S corporation. Uh, bank name or personal name of any other loans you may have. Maybe you have a car note, maybe you have a mortgage, etc. And then we get into the equity section. And then we get into your income accounts. Okay, a number of income accounts. We get into cost of goods accounts. Then we get into expenses. Now, you'll notice when you create your chart of accounts and you give them all numbers, occasionally you're going to see a number pop up. It's because QuickBooks Online wants to create certain accounts when certain things happen. So here's an example right here, other miscellaneous expense. I'm telling you guys, I can right now edit this account, okay, and it's just going to come right back. So what I choose to, I'm sorry, I can delete this account and it's going to come right back, not edit it. What I typically do because of that is I will edit the account. I will go ahead and give it a logical account number. Because I never intend to use this account called other miscellaneous expense. You'll find that accountants like myself, CPAs, we do not like the word miscellaneous. But rather than delete it and have it just to pop up, I'll go ahead and give it a number. And, um, and then I'll delete it. But what delete means is the account has just been made inactive. It really has not. See right here? Expensive is now... Expense is now inactive. It's not really gone. It's still there. Okay. If I want to edit an account, say maybe I want to change this and put my bank name in there. I'll click on this arrow. I'll say edit. And I'll change the way this reads to say first bank. That's who we, we like to bank with. Okay. That's how you edit an account. If I found that I need to add an account, I would click New. Okay, Give it a category type. So let's say that we want to add um, a, a long-term liability. And we're going to say that this is a uh, other term, other long-term liability. I'll give it a name. Maybe this is a um, note payable to um, Mercedes Benz. Okay. And I'll give it a next logical number, which would be 2730, I do believe, 2730. And I'll make this a sub-account of some other long-term liabilities called business loans or corporate loans. I'm going to put it right here. Okay, the balance and as of, don't ever enter anything here. There are much better ways to get the balance of that loan on here. Now, we'll talk about that in a different section, but if you enter a balance here, someone is going to have to deal with that uh, at a later date, the ramifications of it. Okay, so there's, if I scroll down here now to the 2700 area of long-term liabilities, there's my 2730 note payable to Mercedes-Benz, okay? So, there's how you go about um, using your chart of accounts, editing your chart of accounts, adding a new account, etc. Now, one thing I didn't discuss is why do you need a chart of accounts? Well, in accounting, every debit and every credit they must be equal to each other. Now, you don't typically have to be concerned about this as you go in and do day in and day out transactions. If you do a journal entry, yes, you do have to be concerned about this because before you can save that journal entry, debits must be equal to credits. But what happens is, let's say that I am entering an expense. Okay? That expense is going to come out of my bank account 
or it's going to be posted to a credit card account. Now I'm just going to clear this. So what's happening in the background when you do this is there's the credit side, but you don't have to be concerned about that. And then when you post the transaction saying, what is this for, whether it's office supplies, for example, that's the debit side of this transaction. Okay. So if I say um, I bought office supplies and the amount was $71.42, and I bought those from Staples. I'll add Staples as a new vendor. Well, what it's saying is it's going to take $71.42 out of my bank account, and it's going to post that $71.42 as an office expense in office supplies. Does that make sense? All right. Guys, that's it for the chart of accounts. As always, if you have any questions, you can call us at 910-338-0488. You can visit our website at www.quicktrainer.net or .biz, B-I-Z. Either way, you'll find our website. And you can also email us if you have questions at info, I-N-F-O, at quicktrainer.biz, B-I-Z. That's it for today. I hope you found this to be helpful. Feel free to comment as well. Have a great day.